know that I would, I would have done sort of if it was only, hey, we love, we think you're an amazing performer and maybe you can write one episode. They came with all of this responsibility and power and that just felt um, safer. It was like, you know what, maybe there's a real chance of doing something special and specific here. And went to theater school and I, I just, I really learned that it's, um, I, I, it's where I feel the most full as a person, like being a part of, of storytelling in some way. And to me, that really doesn't only look like performance. I'm actually also terrified of performance too, but there's something about team and collaboration and writing and sharing stories that's been a part of my like existence for a very long time and working on sort of it feels like an extension of that with the writer's room and the producers right. it's like so many people yeah. actually feed into to the creative process my parents were like stay away from Toronto you know and and, and then that made me more curious about it. it was like what is so wrong about the city or bad about the city and and it was in coming here that I that it, it to me it really does feel like things are, feel a little bit more possible because when I was out in Mississauga, I just really felt like I would, might be the only person in the world who, who feels um, their queerness in a particular way, their transness in a particular way. This, I don't know that I would, I would have done sort of if it was only, hey, we love, we think you're an amazing performer and maybe you can write one episode. They came with all of this responsibility and power, and that just felt um, safer. It was like, you know what, maybe there's a real chance of doing something special and specific here. And, uh, it, this sounds kind of fairy tale, but we also just organically started sharing life stories together, and then one thing built on top of the other, and we really started to see the show. And I, I think the, the key was, was um, looking at looking, applying the word transition to all the characters mm -hmm. and letting that just be, letting that be so fundamental and not, not heady, like just, it just is. Mm -hmm. These humans evolve right before our eyes and, and transition definitely looks different for each of them, but that, that we use that word for cis folks as well as mm -hmm. trans and non-binary people. The nanny world came from my lived experience as oh, a nanny. I'm a nanny. Like Mary Poppins? Yeah, I was totally a nanny. That was part of the transition, kind of, I thought, out of theater was, was uh, I, I was a nanny, and, and that's where I kind of discovered, like, oh my God, I, 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 kind of, I like hanging out with kids. I like just talking to them, kind of the way Sebi does with the, with the kids, where they're in the first episode, they're, like, explaining shade and the use of, yeah. uh, you know, language or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and it was also Fab's way into the stories because that was a big thing for me I was like where are you where are you in this because if it is equal and collaborative I, I want to know where your heart is I knew we were going for something that felt we were, we were just trying to go for truth above everything you right. know and so sometimes life feels funny and sometimes it's absolutely shattering you know and and I think I think that was the guide for us in every as we were breaking the whole season, every episode, like what feels true. And the big task for me being new to all of this was to just keep checking in with myself and being like, does this feel real? Does this feel honest? I want that to be a part of our constant conversations that we're not so different. We're like we evolving, everyone is evolving constantly. And I just I thought that was so. I was like, okay, that feels fresh. And that feels like a real opportunity to build some empathy for, I think, trans and non-binary people when we start to be like, oh yeah, I feel different today too, you know, or I'm different from three months ago. Or, and maybe that, maybe I, for folks who don't want to change their bodies, that's cool. It, but there is a parallel in, in, in just being connected to yourself and investigating who you are on daily basis so bringing in the consultants making sure the writers room was diverse the, the cast 
the crew. Um, we had a cohort of trans actors in, in for ba- as background performers, you know, and Amazing. that we had to we had to, and it, it was just about working together to make it possible because it wasn't easy. We had to write letters to the union because they were all non-union performers mm-hmm. to get them in. And, right. and we had an open casting call for trans and non-binary performers across the country. And that was quote unquote unconventional, you know? And so, so it was, it was really about knowing that we had aligned values mm-hmm. and then putting in the work to, right. to do, cause it's great to, to want diversity, but then how do you, how do you do it? Yeah. And how do you activate each other to, to get it done, and, and and it can only happen when the team is is aligned, you know, and that it didn't feel like I had to lead every conversation around diversity. Like, I think we as a team, the team of writers, really kept going back to that to find the show, and it totally wasn't easy. But I think it's I think it's possible because there are multiple people in the in that room in that process feeding in, and again having. Um, I wasn't the only South Asian writer. There were two other ones. That's Everyone great. had a different kind of relationship to queerness, whether identifying that way or being a part of that world adjacently or whatever. And so that really, it made such a difference. It made it easier actually mm-hmm. to to go for, for nuance because there were so many lived experiences coloring in the process.